Welcome back. New research shows more female doctors of color are leaving their jobs due to burnout. Dominic Garcia has details on what's causing the exodus. A recent study conducted by the nonprofit Physicians for a Healthy California reveals a growing number of minority women doctors are feeling burned out and are just leaving their field of work. Our survey found that it was almost one in two. It was about 47% of all women physicians of color reported experiencing burnout and really being concerned about their wellness. That's a significant increase from the same study conducted in 2018. Lupe Alonso Diaz is the president and CEO of Physicians for Healthy California and the co-author of a study called A Prescription for Change. She says female physicians of color are drowning in work feel undervalued, and in many cases, experiencing discrimination and racial bias. And aside from the burnout at work, many of them are juggling responsibilities at home. By the time that they got to work, they were already on their second shift, meaning that they're taking care of their children. They're also parenting their parents, so they truly are the sandwich generation. Alonzo Diaz says with a shortage of primary care doctors nationwide, there's an urgent need to retain female physicians of color because they're filling critical roles in our communities. That are much more likely to go and practice in those underserved communities where we have low income, under resourced communities, we have immigrant and refugees communities. So, what are some of the solutions to retaining more female physicians of color? So, the more that employers can create policies and practices that support all physicians, and particularly women physicians of color, the more that they'll be able to retain them. The study suggests other recommendations, like allowing anonymous employee feedback and compensating them for their work in equity, diversity, and inclusion roles. Dominic Garcia, CBS News, Sacramento. Around 90,000 people a year are diagnosed with a primary brain tumor, according to the American Brain Tumor Association. Christian Benavides brings us one woman's story of survival. Grandmother of five, Kathy Magstad, has beaten the odds twice. I had to make peace th with the beast. Her journey with glioblastoma, a fast-growing, aggressive brain tumor, began in 2017. Her first symptom, uncontrollable twitching of her tongue. It was a simple little teeny tiny thing, but it came back, and it came back. Her father died of the same brain cancer and was diagnosed at the same age, 63. My heart sunk. You know, you just, you can't help but think this is the way it's going to be. But Magstead's tumor was caught early. It was the size of two small raisins. Doctors at the University of Miami Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center performed an awake craniotomy. I don't want any invaders. Get them out. And they did. Dr. Macarena de la Fuente is chief of neuro-oncology at the center's new brain tumor institute. Unfortunately, you know, the tumor came back five years after. So last year, she had a second surgery and took part in a clinical trial testing a mix of two chemotherapy drugs, one of only eight people in the world to participate. We check for uh, toxicities, whether the combination of drug is uh, safe. In her case, it was. Tests currently show her cancer is clear. The median survival for a glioblastoma is 18 months. We are here to provide hope. There is no cure for glioblastoma, but new treatments are helping patients live longer. So how are you feeling today? Hanging in. And Maxted yeah. is grateful for that. Cristian Benavides, CBS News. Miami. A recently approved treatment for melanoma is showing promise fighting other types of cancer. We look at how till therapy is doing what traditional chemotherapy cannot. John Kosick of Cincinnati is breathing a little more easily these days. They don't see any cancer in my skins, which is a plus, right? The 59-year-old was diagnosed with advanced lung cancer in 2020, despite not smoking for nearly three decades. Surgery and traditional chemotherapy didn't keep his disease at bay, so Kosick was recommended for clinical trials of TIL therapy at the Ohio State University Comprehensive Cancer Center. Everything looks stable. Dr. Kai Hu's work helped win FDA approval of TIL, or tumor infiltration lymphocyte therapy, to treat metastatic melanoma. Now, TIL is showing promise in advanced lung cancers like COSIX. We are trying to expand uh, horizon for this uh, treatment and hopefully bring the treatment to more 
a cancer patient to treat more cancers. Till therapy works by extracting the body's immune-fighting T cells, growing them in a lab to number in the billions, and infusing them back into the patient. A one-time chemotherapy treatment clears out unhealthy T cells to make space for the new Till T cells. March 6th marked two years since Kosick started the clinical trial, a process he says hasn't been easy, but he's grateful for the outcome. Yes, I'd go through that again for the result. Kosick is still working and spending time with his family and grandchildren, time he might not have had without this new treatment. After the break, how the Girl Scouts are battling loneliness and how this family found a colorful way to fight asthma.